everyone i am dr raghavi today we are going to see about the important topics in genetics so in genetics the chief or confusing topics are two one is cell division and the other is the pedigree charts so we'll see both today we'll start with cell division before that i'll just give you a short introduction on chromosomes so each human somatic cell is going to have 23 pairs of chromosomes the first 22 pairs are autosomes and have been designated the numbers 1 through 22 depending upon the decreasing relative length of the chromosome pairs the composition of the third pair of chromosomes the sex chromosomes determines a person's gender so diploid means 46 chromosomes and haploid means 23 chromosomes so a basic chromosome consists of a uh, two parts that is like two arms a short arm or the p arm and the long arm or the q arm these two arms are connected at the middle known as a centromere the centromere is also called as a primary constriction or kinetic core and chromatids or during cell division each chromosome splits into two distinct longitudinal subunits and these are called as chromatid Apart from the primary constriction, a chromosome can have a secondary cr- constriction nearer to the telomeric end, and if it is there, the region of the chromosome between the telomere and the secondary constriction is known as a satellite. Telomeres are ends of chromosomes which are highly stable and they do not fuse or uni- unite with telomere of other chromosomes. Chromomere is or bead-like structures seen on the chromosomes of some species. and the structure of chromos- chromomeres in a chromosome remains constant so based on the position of the centromere a chromosome can be metacentric where the centromere is exactly at the center of the chromosome if the centromere is towards one end then it is submetacentric or if it is very near to one end of the chromosome then it is known as acrocentric where the short arm is very short and the long arm is very long very long the ad- significance of acrocentric chromosome in humans are when there is a kind of translocation called as robertsonian translocation which can occur in acrocentric chromosomes in chromo- in humans the acrocentric chromosomes are 13 14 20 21 and 22 and telocentric chromosomes are not found in human beings and here the centromere is found at one end of the chromosome so as i told you earlier robertsonian translocation involving the acros- <coughs> acrocentric chromosomes can lead to monosomy in one cell and trisomy in the other cell and is one of the reasons for down's syndrome that is the familial type of down syndrome which has a 10% recurrence risk now we'll go on to cell division cell division in human beings involves two types one is mitosis and the other is meiosis mitosis is equi- equational division wherein the parent cell which contains 46 chromosomes is going to give rise to two daughter cells each containing the same 46 chromosomes in other words a diploid cell is going to give rise to two diploid daughter cells the stages of mitosis are as follows first is the interphase then prophase during which the chromosome number is doubled during the metaphase the chromosomes align at the equatorial plate of the cell and the centrioles form mitotic spindles which get attached to the centromere of each chromosomes and the chromatids are pulled apart towards each end of the cell up during anaphase and then during telophase microtubules disappear and the cell itself divides and at the end of telophase we have two daughter cells formed with each having 46 chromosomes that is diploid to diploid on the other hand when it comes to meiosis it is reduction division where a single parent cell containing diploid number of chromosomes is going to give rise to four daughter cells each containing haploid number of chromosomes meiosis occurs in two steps first is meiosis 
then is the meiosis 2 in meiosis 1 the reduction division occurs wherein the single parent cell containing diploid number of chromosomes gives rise to two daughter cells containing haploid number of chromosomes in meiosis 2 each of these two daughter cells give rise to two more daughter cells so that at the end of meiosis we have four daughter cells each having haploid chromosome number so the phases of meiosis are as follows so during interphase in the similar manner the dna replication occurs in prophase 1 homologous chromosomes pair up and crossing over occurs as in met mitosis in metaphase 1 the chromosomes line up at the equator and in anaphase each chromosome of a single homologous pair goes to one end of the cell in this manner the diploid cell becomes haploid at the end of anaphase 1 and following which we have division of the cytoplasm and two haploid daughter cells are formed at the end of meiosis 1 therefore meiosis 1 is the reduction division in meiosis 2 it is similar to mitosis wherein each of these two daughter cells is going to divide into two daughter cells therefore from one haploid daughter cell two haploid daughter cells arise passing through prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and telophase 2 so in the end we have a single diploid parent cell giving rise to four haploid daughter cells so mitosis versus meiosis in prophase 1 here we have sister chromatids with <coughs> homologous chromosomes aligning together and there is crossing over of the homologous chromosomes during anaphase and telophase sister chromatids separate in mitosis on the other hand in meiosis the homologous chromosomes separate that is one chromosome of each pair is going to separate and finally at the end we have two diploid daughter cells in mitosis wherein in meiosis we have four haploid daughter cells at the end now we look into few questions to make this concept clear a diploid human cell that is dividing will contain how many chromosomes and these chromosomes will each consist of how many chromatids so in a human cell that is dividing the human cell will contain 46 chromosomes and each of these chromosomes will consist of two chromatids so the answer is e with regards to cell cycle in what phase do chromatids get cleaved into chromosomes and pulled apart so this division on pulling apart occurs in anaphase so in cell cycle g0 is a resting phase then we have the interphase which includes G1, S and G2 phases where the cell grows and DNA replication occurs forming chromatids. Mitosis that is the cell division happens in the following phases as I mentioned earlier. We have prophase where there is condensation of the chromatin into chromosome sorry into chromosomes and formation of mitotic spindle. Metaphase the alignment of chromatids at the equatorial plate occurs. Anaphase is where the chromatids are pulled apart into two daughter chromosomes. Telophase new nuclear envelopes form around each of the doctor chromosome sets so that the nuclear division is complete which is followed by cytoplasmic division and the, in the end of mitosis you have two daughter cells which are diploid like the parent cell. Which of the following distinguishes prophase 1 of meiosis from prophase of mitosis? So meiosis there is pairing up of homologous chromosomes and crossing over which is responsible for the genetic variability in humans. So this is the phase which differentiates meiosis 1 from mitosis 1. In a cell undergoing meiosis during prophase 1 how many centromeres and chromatids will the cell have? So during meiosis or at the prophase 1 we will be the cell will be having each of this chroma chromosome will contain one centromere so that is the number of chromosomes is going to remain same then therefore the number of centromere is going to be 46 
but however the dna gets duplicated therefore each chromosome will be having two chromatids so the number of chromatids will be 92 so the answer for this question would be 46 centromeres and 92 chromatids meiosis results in four haploid daughter cells the answer is b so in this diagram we have pictures representing the stages of cell cycle so the correct answer would be d or the first phase is interphase followed by the prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase which is represented here two is the interphase then you have three wherein you can see the chromosomes aligning at the equatorial plate then you have them getting pulled apart as an anaphase in picture number one then picture number five is showing you the separation of the uh, separation and formation of nuclear membrane and picture number four is showing you the for cell cytoplasmic division and final formation of the two daughter cells so the correct answer is going to be two three one five and four which is option d in meiosis if the parent cells have 40 chromosomes how many will the daughter cells have as we already saw meiosis is a reduction division if the mother is having 40 equivalent to 2 n chromosomes the daughter cells each of the daughter cells are going to have n chromosomes which is 40 divided by 2 20 chromosomes fine so again re uh, repeating it meiosis is reduction division mitosis is equational division meiosis the parent cell with diploid number of chromosomes is going to give rise to four haploid daughter cells mitosis the parent diploid cell is going to give rise to two diploid daughter cells so in this picture the structure marked by x is going to be the centriole the green lines from the centriole are the mitotic spindles which are getting attached to the centromere of the chromosome okay so which of the eugenesis is the process that creates the female gametes and it is halted at prophase 1 of puberty. So which of the following describes the DNA content of the female's gamete during her childhood. So since it is halted at prophase 1 or the first division of meiosis, each female contains oocytes which have 46 chromosomes and 92 chromatids. Now we are moving on to pedigree chart. So these are the commonly used symbols in pedigree chart. An unaffected male is represented by a square. An affected, unaffected female is represented by a circle. A single line between male and female it means mating. If it is men, uh, connected through two lines, then it is consanguineous mating. Dizygotic twins are represented with a box and a circle with connected together by an arrow. Monozygotic twins are represented by a triangle. As you can see from this picture, miscarriage of stillbirth is represented by a dot. All affected individuals are represented by colored boxes or dark colored boxes. A carrier female is represented by a circle with a dot. A heterozygote, that in case of autosomal recessive, is represented by a box which is half normal and half darkly colored. A deceased individual is usually represented by putting a cross or a slash across their symbol. Now we will see uh, examples of pedigree chart for each of the conditions and also few common examples of these disorders. So this pedigree chart shows two individuals who are affected, who get married and in their next generation we have their children are both affected as well as unaffected and we can see two unaffected individuals giving rise not having only normal children. So this shows this pedigree chart is an example of an autosomal dominant condition. So wherein an affected parent can give rise to the chance of, the, of their children having or inheriting the mutated gene is 50% while there is 50% chance that the child will not inherit a mutated gene. So the pedigree is going to be an affected person is going to give rise to 50% chance of affected child and 50% chance of having an unaffected child. The most common examples of autosomal dominant diseases are as follows. So each affected person in autosomal dominant has at least one affected parent. 
an affected parent has 50% chance of passing the trait to a child males and females are equally likely to be affected and two affected people can have an unaffected child because it is an autosomal dominant condition two affected people can still have one normal chromosome and if a child inherits both of these normal chromosomes from his or her parents then the child will be unaffected common examples are tuberous sclerosis marfan syndrome neurofibromatosis type 1 and one important question that is usually asked in mrcog is the mode of inheritance of brca1 and brca2 that is the breast and ovarian cancer susceptibility susceptibility genes these are inherited via autosomal dominant manner only then we have hereditary non polyposis colon cancer huntington heart disease which is also autosomal dominant inheritance is seen now in this chart you can you can see there is an affected person in the first generation in the second generation both males and females are affected and in the third generation again both males and females are affected but you can also see that there are multiple unaffected individuals so let me explain this to you in detail again so here when <coughs> whenever there is an autosomal recessive disease there is disease happens only when the individual inherits both disrupted or abnormal genes where only one gene is disrupted the individual is known as a carrier and is healthy so individuals with an autosomal recessive condition will only have affected children if they mate with another affected individual or with a carrier of this condition so if two carriers have children as you can see from this picture there is the possibility in the next generation would be a child which carries both the genes without mutation that is an unaffected non carrier healthy child and there can be two children who are carriers like their parents that is 50% chance of being a carrier and there is a chance that a child can also inherit both the affected genes that is both the mutated genes and actually be and actually be a person with the disease so if two carriers of an autosomal recessive condition marry each other there is 50% chance that the child is going to be a carrier 25% chance that the child can be all right and another 25% chance that the child is going to be affected by the disease so this is what is seen in this condition in this pedigree chart so here you can see a female affected female has given the disease to both male and female on the other hand 6 who is an unaffected female is marrying 7 who is an affected male and only 8 and 10 who are both females are having the disease so this is an example of an x linked dominant syndrome wherein female can transmit to both males and females but male can transmit only to females because the affected male will transmit the defective x chromosome to all daughters but not to his sons so in this condition we can have a female with the disease in the first generation we can have both male and female are showing the disease and also we can see 3 and 4 even though both of them are not affected by disease or the carrier status we have 9 who's affected so this is an example of x linked recessive condition the examples are duchenne's muscular dystrophy hemophilia a and b so usually there is a chance that one is to two chance that sons of carrier females will carry the disease daughters of all affected males can only be carriers so only male individuals are affected however very rarely female individuals are affected they have a mild phenotype there is no male to male transmission of the condition if the male to male transmission is seen then this condition cannot be an x linked recessive sometimes it can skip generations or it may look as if it seems to skip generations because one generation can only have carriers where are females while the next generation males can actually have the disease this is known as knight's move so here is one condition where you can see the first generation female is affected in the second generation both males and females are affected but you can see again the males have not transmitted the disease only females have transmitted so this means it is a disease which is inherited by a mitochondria 
or mitochondrial inherited disease like red syndrome so in that pedigree chart i showed you the first generation one female is affected in the second generation all males and females are affected but in the third generation only affected females are transmitting the condition to both males and females and affected males are not transmitting the condition to either males or females because mitochondrial dna from sperm is lost during fertilization hence males do not transmit any mitochondrial disease to the offspring thank you